Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our oral medicine series. This video will be a brief overview of the ASA classification system, which is asked about on the board exam. So the American Society of Anesthesiologists, the ASA Physical Status Classification System, has been used for well over 60 years now. And the intended purpose of this system was to determine a patient's medical comorbidities before receiving general anesthesia. So it ranked people from physical status one to six, and the higher you are, the more at risk you are of having some adverse medical events during general anesthesia. So it enabled better communication among anesthesiologists. But it can also be applied more broadly to just get an overall idea of someone's health status and medical risk based on their medical history. So let's go through this chart one row at a time. And we start with ASA1, which is a normal, healthy patient. So this would be someone who is not a smoker, they have no or minimal alcohol use, and also none of these other things that we're going to mention must apply to this patient. So they're perfectly healthy. And I will say this is actually fairly rare. It's pretty rare to find somebody who falls perfectly in this ASA1 category. For this kind of patient, no special precautions are needed for dental treatment. Then we go to ASA2, which is probably the most common of all these rows. This is a patient with mild systemic disease. And they only have to have one of these things. It doesn't mean they have all of these, only one of them would automatically put them in ASA2. So this could be that they're a current smoker. Pregnancy also puts someone in this category. A well-controlled hypertension, well-controlled diabetes, which means your HbA1c is less than 7% for a current diabetic. They're a social alcohol drinker, obesity, well-controlled epilepsy, asthma, or thyroid dysfunction. So these are all conditions that impose little to no functional limitations on the patient. So elective dental care is okay, but you might consider some minor treatment modifications. Then we go to ASA 3, which is for a patient with severe systemic disease that limits activity but is not incapacitating. So this could be stable angina pectoris, which is chest pain only with a stimulus like physical activity. A past history of more than three months ago of a heart attack, stroke, or transient ischemic attack. Exercise induced asthma could also fall in here, so a specific type of asthma. Uh, end stage renal disease where the patient is currently undergoing dialysis treatment. Alcohol abuse or dependence morbid obesity, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, poorly controlled hypertension, poorly controlled diabetes, HbA1c is greater than 7%, poorly controlled epilepsy, and or symptomatic thyroid dysfunction. So if the last category was all about well-controlled diseases, this category is all about poorly controlled diseases. So for these patients, elective care is generally okay, but there needs to be a serious consideration of treatment modification. And you can reference some of the things we talked about in the last few videos on what you might do for uh, a patient at a certain you know, hypertension, uh, blood pressure reading, or blood sugar reading. All right, now we get a little bit more serious. So for ASA 4, that's a patient with an incapacitating systemic disease that's a constant threat to life. This could be unstable angina pectoris, so spontaneous chest pain with or without a stimulus, a recent less than three months ago, a heart attack, myocardial infarction, a stroke, or transient ischemic attack, end-stage renal disease where the patient's not undergoing dialysis treatment, uncontrolled epilepsy or seizures, and septic shock. I would also put something like symptomatic uh, hypertensive emergency in here as well. 
Elective care for these patients is contraindicated. And as for urgent and emergency care, we want to stick to non-invasive treatment if possible. So, uh, for example, medications or invasive treatment in a controlled, likely hospital environment. Then we go down to ASA 5, which is even more serious. This would be a moribund patient not expected to survive the next 24 hours without a surgery or operation. So this would be end-stage cancer, uh, end-stage infectious disease, end-stage cardiovascular disease, end-stage hepatic dysfunction, or a massive life-threatening trauma. Only palliative care beyond the necessary surgery is advised. And then just for completeness sake is a declared brain dead patient whose organs are being removed for donor purposes. This is an ASA 6. You won't be getting a patient case down here. Uh, likely, most of them will either be ASA 2 or 3. So speaking of which, I have a couple of example cases that we can work through together just to test your knowledge and go over what we reviewed in the previous chart. So for all of these questions, we'll be asking what ASA classification best describes this patient, which could absolutely be something that you're asked on the board exam. So for this kind of question, if you're somebody who reads the question first and then looks at the patient box, you really don't care about um, much of this information up here. We don't really care about their chief complaint. Uh, we're really focusing in on the medical history and maybe some of the current findings if they include uh, vital signs or blood sugar, things like that. So what we see is that they have hypertension. And if we sneak down here at the medications, we notice they're taking two medications that are actually used to control hypertension. So remember, hypertension is ASA2 if it's well controlled. It's ASA3 if it's poorly controlled. And here's another gray area. What exactly is poorly controlled hypertension? Now, some sources will say it's anything greater than 180 over 110. Some sources will say it's anything over 120 over 80. In my hypertension video, we talked about all the official AHA categories and at what readings I tend to implement certain treatment modifications like stress management and slow chair movements. But I was careful not to define well and poorly controlled for this reason because it is a bit of a gray area. But now that we've gotten to the ASA video, I want you to have a number in your head for these vital sign readings. So for poorly controlled, I would go with anything that's 140 over 90 or above. That's going to be your threshold for what is poorly controlled. So basically stage two hypertension. So we see that this patient has an elevated blood pressure. We are in stage two hypertension, even with some blood pressure medications. So I would say this is pretty safely a poorly controlled situation. Elevated blood pressure in stage two, even with two medications. So this would point them towards an ASA 3. The obesity is an ASA 2. If the BMI is greater than or equal to 30, it's ASA 3 if morbid obesity, or the BMI is the body mass index is greater than or equal to 40. So this would point them towards an ASA 2, but we already have an ASA 3, so that one's kind of ruled out. We, we're always going to pick the thing that puts you at the highest category. Then they also have end-stage renal disease. So this is an ASA 3 if they're under dialysis, an ASA 4 if there is no dialysis. Well, they mentioned that they're doing it three times a week, which is pretty standard. So this would also be an ASA 3. So again, if you have multiple factors from different ASA levels, you always go with the highest one. So the answer here would be ASA 3. Let's do another one. So we have a patient here. Uh, we have a paramedic who is bringing this patient in. They were the victim of an MVA and they're triaging them for uh, immediate surgery. So you're probably in some hospital environment. For their background, they have a zygomatico-maxillary complex fracture, a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, multi-organ dysfunction, 
and we don't know their medications haven't been, been able to find any current findings yet. So this patient needs immediate surgery to survive. And this is a pretty unlikely case unless, again, you're in an emergency room, you're in a hospital setting. But because of the multi-organ dysfunction, the massive life-threatening trauma, this would be an ASA-5, a moribund patient not expected to survive the next 24 hours without some immediate intervention. All right, how about this one? So we have a patient 24 years old here for a cleaning, and let's go to their medical history. They have type 2 diabetes. This will be um, either 2 or 3 for the ASA category, depending on how well controlled it is. So how do we find that out? Well, we can see they're taking some medication, glipizide, that's for type 2 diabetes, and their blood glucose today is 110 milligrams per deciliter. And this is a, as far as we can tell, a random glucose reading. So that means we assume it is not under fasting conditions. We assume that they ate something within the last eight hours. So anything under 140 milligrams per deciliter is acceptable. So that's pretty good. And HbA1c less than 7% is considered well controlled for a diabetic. Remember, this is measuring the percent of hemoglobin that is glycosylated in that blood sample. So anything less than 7%, well controlled. So these are looking pretty good. So we would go with an ASA2 for this patient's, uh, as far as their diabetes status. So they smoke cigarettes and they drink socially. Both of those point towards an ASA2 as well. Now her blood pressure is 123 over 65. There's no mention of hypertension in the medical history. It is considered elevated in our AHA categories, but it's not over that threshold of 140 over 90. So I wouldn't consider this poorly controlled. This is just maybe an anxious patient. There's no hypertension to be concerned about for this patient. So they're at two and two, so we're gonna say they are an ASA classification to patient. So those are some examples. You'll probably see ASA two and three most commonly. You might see a four, and on a very rare occasion, you might see a five. But that is what you're looking for in terms of uh, analyzing a patient's medical history and their, their vital signs or blood glucose or HbA1c. And now you know what all those mean thanks to the last couple videos. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons here for all their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link will be in the description below. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.